Your choice is greatly honored and appreciated by all in the spiritual realms. May 26, 2014 You are most dearly loved. Focus on that when you go to your quiet inner space to meditate, and don't judge, or, worse still, condemn yourself for your perceived lack of ability or value. It's an utterly wrong and invalid perception that your ego encourages you to believe is true in order to keep you in doubt and fear. You are on Earth at this point in your evolution, humanity's awakening process, with a very specific and essential purpose. You chose to take part because you knew that you could be of very great assistance, and your choice is greatly honored and appreciated by all in the spiritual realms where we have full knowledge and understanding of what is required of and offered by all our brothers and sisters presently incarnate on Earth. Every one of you is highly honored and respected for your choice to be human at this point, and our love for you all knows no bounds. We thank you. Waiting for this divinely planned stellar event, humanity's awakening, is often very tiring and worrying for you as it brings to the fore your own personal doubts about your belief in God and heaven, as from time to time, you get drawn down into the darkness of the illusion, where it seems most real. Is a belief in God, a source of all that exists, a supreme and divine intelligence, an adult version of a child's belief in Father Christmas? You sometimes ask yourselves when you are feeling particularly low. I can assure that it most definitely is not. Children have a more recent memory of the divine realms, and so a belief in Father Christmas makes total sense to them. Then, as they grow older and their innocent beliefs are shattered, it becomes apparent that in this illusory world there is no magic, and they discard their innocent belief in Father Christmas. But of course most of them, like most of the adult population, come to believe it to be a real world of hard knocks and hard work with quite a lot of pain and suffering, occasionally interspersed with moments of pleasure, but definitely a very real and not an illusory world. The pain, when it occurs, is far too intense for that. It is seemingly far too real for most people to see and accept that in fact it is illusory. Even those who have a strong faith in God's love for them still buy into the belief in a real world of untold pain and suffering instead of realizing and understanding that a loving God, who truly is the source of all that exists, could not and would not create such a harsh environment for his children to inhabit, and then judge and punish them for their sins and inadequacies while enveloped within it. They buy into the age-old and totally invalid belief that he demands their good behavior, and then watches over them constantly, making copious notes of their sins and other failings, to ensure that in the end they are adequately punished for those failings, before, perhaps, being welcomed into heaven, probably as second-class citizens. But that belief arises out of the separation that you chose to experience by being born into bodies with severely limited abilities. And when, as a result, you found yourselves apparently alone, abandoned, and struggling to survive in a very hostile world, you invented a superior being, a god, in fact an idol, to replace your father, whom you had forgotten and whom you then spent eons trying to appease in the hope of being rescued from the sorry but unreal state in which you found yourselves. All your earthly cultures and nations have invented and built sets of ruling hierarchies, supposedly guided and directed by God, into which a select few, those born into aristocratic or noble families, or those of very high intelligence and with a total lack of moral integrity, are invited as members. On joining the ranks of the vehemently corrupt, they are then more fully instructed in the use of dishonorable rhetoric, manipulation, deceit, force, punishment, and guilt, in order to maintain control over the little people, the populations that they claim to be protecting. And, as you can see, it has worked very well. Over the eons these ruling hierarchies have engaged in regular wars against each other to increase their power and influence by attempting to destroy each other. They have used their own populations, those whom they are claiming to defend and protect and who have been trained from a very early age to distrust people who are different from them in color, race, or religious beliefs, to fight and suffer for a supposed noble cause protecting their noble bosses from the unwarranted and insane attacks of the barbarians. In wars against any culture those self-elected bosses choose to demonize or engage in war with. 
This behavior will no longer be permitted as more and more of the ordinary people, the little people, who in fact are beings of enormous power and light, become aware of how badly they have been misled and lied to by those whom they believed had their best interests at heart. This growing awareness is leading to a complete collapse in support for the various political systems that are supposed to maintain order and safety for the nations of the world. Your whistleblowers are deserving of the highest honors for the courage they have demonstrated in bringing to your attention the deceit and corruption that has been endemic in high places for far too long. The power of the wealthy and influential can no longer be maintained. Your political systems and organizations are finally being seen for what they truly are, clubs and associations for the rich and powerful, enabling them to control humanity. They have constantly used, misled, and ill-treated you, while pretending to maintain order to ensure your safety. They have enslaved you in menial occupations that saps your energy and creative abilities and set you one against another, because the organizations and corporate structures which employed you and to which you belonged always seem to be engaged in ongoing conflicts with other similarly powerful organizations, so your loyalty and support was always required. At the highest levels, as you are becoming increasingly aware, there is no conflict. There are just a few wealthy individuals, the 0.001%, who gamble incessantly in the financial markets for their delight and amusement in endless testosterone-driven games of rock-paper-scissors. When they lose, as some of them have to, you pay and you suffer, while those losers very quickly regain what they had never really lost. As you move towards your awakening into your natural and fully conscious state, refrain from judging or condemning those who have cheated, bullied, tortured, and enslaved you. Remember that the more viciously you experience a perceived attack the greater the pain that the attacker has denied and repressed within himself. In fact his suffering is greater than yours. God, our source, is infinitely loving because he is love. Nothing exists that is not within God the eternal and creative field of love. Everything that exists is therefore created from love, and consequently its eternal nature is love. Those who appear to be evil are just very confused, they are sick with confusion and they need to be healed so that they can awaken, just like everyone else. God does not discard, condemn, or destroy, because all that he creates is perfect. And there is nothing else. Love heals, and you chose to incarnate to embrace love and bring it and demonstrate it to those who have forgotten it. This does not mean that you need to go out and proselytize or courageously point out people's apparent errors, mistakes, or sins. No, just be loving, fully loving in every moment, in every situation, and by doing so, extend the healing that God's love offers to all of His children, without exception, to every soul with whom you interact. Just by constantly holding the intent to be always loving, regardless of the circumstances, or the situations in which you find yourselves, you are effectively and very efficaciously healing the world. That is why you chose to incarnate at this point in Earth's history, it is the task that you knowingly, willingly, and most compassionately undertook to bring humanity to its awakening. And although many of you remain seemingly unaware of the work you are doing, and of the fantastic results that you are achieving, nevertheless, keep on intending to hold your light on high, and intend that it meld and integrate with the light that everyone else on earth at this time is also holding on high, sharing and extending. What you are doing is amazing. Do not let your doubts or low moods unduly upset you, the energies of the dark are being dissolved through you just as you intended when you made the decision to incarnate as humans and assist so ably in its awakening process. When you made the decision you knew that the dark would envelop you from time to time, but you also knew that with the power of God's grace flowing constantly through the light that each of you is carrying, it would dissolve, and that is what is happening at an ever faster pace. Accept our congratulations for the wonders that you are achieving and seek our love and our assistance daily when you go within to experience the peace that is God, knowing that we are always there for you, holding you in a loving embrace. Your loving brother, Jesus. Channeled by John Smallman. John Smallman 2.files.wordpress.com